in the mythology of the Guyana tribes and the northwestern Brazil, Canama are spirits of vengeance and retaliation, that will viciously attack and painfully kill their victims, as payback for some injustice. Some accounts say that Canama are powerful shapeshifters that can appear in a variety of forms and can drive anyone insane with just one look. Other accounts claim that the Kanama cannot exist or manifest its powers or hurt anyone on its own, but can only operate through an eligible host or agent. The host or agent of the Kanama is a vengeful soul, a person who seeks to avenge a known cause, a person who direly wishes to see another fellow suffer a painful death in retaliation to an unforgivable injury, harm or pain inflicted upon him, or those dear to him. In other words, the Kanama has no will of its own, it fulfills the wishes of someone who seeks nothing but vengeance for a wrong or injustice done. The Guyana tribes believe that when a person desires revenge against another fellow from the depths of his heart, so much that it becomes his sole intent or purpose of living, he unconsciously awakens and invokes the Kanama demon which in turn possesses him, thus, giving him the power to achieve his vengeful desire. The Kanama's thirst for blood can only be quenched with the death of the offender, or the annihilation of his whole family. If a Kanama is wrongly summoned without any real intent of revenge, it possesses an animal instead, preferably a jaguar, tiger or leopard, then kills the foolish summoner. The possessed animal goes insane and becomes the Kanama itself. It becomes able to walk on two legs as well as on all fours. In this animal form, the thirst for blood and hunger for flesh is increased by tenfold. It goes on a killing spree, maiming and killing anyone on its path, until it finds a master who is worthy of its services. In the case of Kanima possessed humans, the possessed host becomes mad and wild with rage, and will violently attack its victims. He suddenly disappears from the settlement or community, no one knows where he is. He wanders now as Kanima through the forests, valleys, and heights, and does not return until he has slain his victim and then banished the Kanima demon. If the target cannot be found, the Kanima goes after the target's families and friends. From the moment the Kanima host leaves the settlement, he is outlawed. He has cut all the ties which bind him to his family and his tribe. He becomes a general enemy and anyone who may accidentally meet him in the bush, should try to kill him or be killed by him. Within days of the demonic possession, the host begins to transform into what the Kanama demon looks like. His skin develops red, brown or black spots like that of a jaguar. By the time the transformation is complete, Every shred of humanity in the host is gone. He loses his soul. He becomes neither a man nor an animal. He becomes the dreadful Kanama itself in its full entity. The soul of the host can only be regained when the Kanama demon has been banished from inside him which is only possible after the death of the target. The longer the target evades the Kanama, the more the Kanama wreaks havoc on nearby communities. Every single night of not finding its target, the Kanima shape shifts into a jaguar, and slays unsuspecting victims. Whoever the Kanima kills, it would slit the victim's tongue and twist his intestines into knots such that the tongue and abdomen appear swollen. These are the distinctive marks of Kanima attack. When at last the Kanima finds his target all alone, he can choose to rip him apart instantly or more commonly, slay him by poison, the arrow, or the club and then complete the killing on the third day. If by poison, the victim immediately feels a sharp burning sensation in the bowels, a raging fever, and an extreme and unquenchable thirst, with no means of obtaining relief. The victim will quickly realize that his days, even his hours, are numbered. Within few days, he becomes reduced to a skeleton and dies in fearful torment. Now, to obtain his freedom and purification, whichever means the Kanama may employ, whether by poison, arrow, club, or deep fatal scratches, 
The Kanama host especially refrains from causing the immediate death of his victim for the reason that the banishing ritual can only be done on the third day of the victim's death or the third day of the attack on which the victim dies. This means that the actual death should not take place before three days have passed. The Kanama makes equally certain that the sufferer does not tell anyone of his ordeal and torment by slitting or twisting his tongue. But if the attack proves too fatal and the victim dies outrightly, the Kanima must bury or enclose the corpse where no one else would find it. Then, on the third night the Kanima visits the grave and stabs a pointed staff, or in few stories, its long pointy nails into the body. Upon drawing this out, he will lick the blood off it. And by so doing, the host has appeased the Kanima demon inside him, hence, the Kanima is banished from him. The host is purified and regains his soul, such that he returns contented and normal to his settlement. However, the Kanima demon, just like every other demon, is a clever one in the view that it would not want to leave the body of the host, and so would try to tempt the host into not performing the banishing ritual. Fortunately, the will of the host supersedes that of the demon and would always triumph if the host truly wants his freedom after his mission is complete. But if the evil spirit succeeds in dissuading the host from performing the purification rites, his soul is lost forever, and he wanders mad until death or some other dire consequences. Some say that if one dies with the Kanama demon still in him, he would surely end up in the pits of hell delivered to the demon king by the Kanama which possessed him. It is a relief to know that the Kanama demon and host could be killed before their mission is complete. The first way is to directly charge at and kill the Kanama host, thereby banishing the demon. This is a feat reserved only for powerful shamans. It would be pure suicide for any other person, as no average human can withstand the spiritual and physical viciousness of the Kanama. The second way is to let the Kanima kill its target, then poison the corpse, so that when the Kanima comes back on the third day to taste the blood of the corpse, the poison would kill the host and the evil spirit would be banished. Kanima is also said to be the name of a certain tree growing in the savannas, of which the sap has remarkable properties. After rubbing himself with it, a man will go mad and become changed into some animal as a tiger or a snake, and do people harm. In addition, accounts have it that at the head of the river Jaw Apiri and river Tarumanasut, streams flowing into the Rio Negro to the eastward of the Rio Branco, there are a series of wild tribes called Kanama tribes. These Kanama tribes are killers and cutthroats by profession, educated from generation to generation in the act of murder and theft killing for the pleasure of killing, not even eating their victims but utilizing their tibias for flutes and their teeth for necklaces. They would approach the sleeping places of men, or where lay the solitary Indian in his path and subject them to painful deaths. And, that is all about the Kanama. Do subscribe for more videos on mythology.